After starting this YouTube journey talking about using my watches out in the field, I've seen a lot of other videos about striving for that perfect three watch collection. After years of being into watches and collecting watches, I think I finally achieved my perfect three watch collection. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. My name is Shane Walls. I make my living as a fine art nature photographer who truly depends on his watches and are an intricate tool in my photography process. And really quickly on that note, if you are interested in my photography, we're doing a massive, massive sale right now, something I've never done before, but we have to clear out both my LA and Laguna Beach art studio for an upcoming project. So check out the link below if you want to use this opportunity to get my artwork at a discount. Also too, with this upcoming project, it's gonna allow me to create some amazing watch content. We're gonna put some watches through the test, putting them in some of the most hostile environments on this planet. Okay, on to the, what I think is my perfect three watch collection. We'll start off with the first one, the G-Shock, the 5610-1. Now this watch, this is the one I actually use the least. This is a great little watch. I mean, it's kind of the oxymoron of the group. It is the toughest in short term. I can beat this one up the most, but it is kind of my Sunday lazy day watch. It's just because it's so comfortable, lightweight. It, it automatically updates itself. So I don't really have to think about it. So it's kind of my lazy day watch. And also too, when I go running, I'll wear this as well as quick trips to the store, kind of just around town again on the weekend kind of days. The reason I don't take it out on location with me or photograph with it is its legibility and also that it has a battery. Some of my camera exposures are 15, 20, 30 seconds long and this light on the back when it's dark, it only turns on for a couple seconds. As well as to G-Shock is a great tough watch, but it isn't the best in cold situations. And every time I go snow camping, I actually have to put the watch on outside my jacket and when it's not touching skin, the battery just kind of gets stale and flat and it keeps shutting off on me where I haven't had that problem with a mechanical watch. It's nice with the solar power charging and everything's automatic on it. And as a person who kind of likes doing things the old way, I haven't really connected with this digital watch as much as I have with my mechanical watches but a great comfortable watch that you don't have to worry about, as well as you can beat the hell out of it and not have to worry about it. Next up is my Rolex Explorer 2. And this is pretty much my daily wear. Seven out of 10 times, I usually go for this watch. This was my first Rolex purchase, probably a little over a year and a half ago. And I just truly love this watch. The look of it, I mean, the orange GMT hand with the orange text, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, pretty watch. And it's certainly, it's totally helpful as a GMT because I travel so much. It's such a great feature. The polished sides of this watch is a magnet for scratches, but I don't mind it. I do like how this watch looks all scratched up and beat up with its dings on the bezel, even though it's a machine bezel, the scratches, the scratches and dings add to the lure of this watch, I think. The Rolex bracelet is very comfortable and is very handy out in the field with this little, it's not a quick release system, but it's got a little hook here so it fits over my jacket like I talked about earlier in cold weather to time my exposures. But most of the time this does, the Explorer 2 lives on a canvas leather strap just because of all the hiking I do, sweating, not to be gross, but it's just a little bit more comfortable having kind of a rubber canvas leather band on it. The 12.5 millimeters thickness of this watch is perfect. Be slid under a jacket or a coat. The white polar dial with the black hand. This is the most legible watch I've ever had. And it's so easy to read on a glance with the strong loom. Again, like I talked about earlier, timing long exposures at night. This loom is incredible. It almost, if you have it out throughout the day, it'll pretty much last the whole night. Probably my favorite, well, all, all three of these watches 
I have kind of sentimental value to, so I will never sell any of these three watches. G-Shock, I know I'll have to replace, but the two, this one and the upcoming watch, I will never get rid of because I've connected with them so much. And the Rolex Explorer 2, it's meant for exploring and that's what I try to do with it. I'm out with it all the time. You can do anything, it's at home in any environment, especially out in the rough and tumble. And you can see from these up close shots, this has been worn, it's been scratched up. The machine bezel here, it looks so good. It is a little flashy being all silver, but it just, it's such a handy, it's such a good tool watch and that's what I use it for. And I really, really like this watch and it'll be in my collection forever and ever. 100 meters of water resistance would be plenty for me. The only reason why I got, cause I've originally thought this was gonna be my one watch collection, one and done. The only reason I did get another watch was because of diving. Again, the 100 meters on this watch is plenty for me, but the only reason I was thinking about that is the rubber gaskets and everything in here. Not much you can do if you're out like I am in dry, hot weather all the time out in the desert. I figured after a while that rubber just wouldn't hold up and I think it would start falling apart. Nothing you can do about it. I mean, any watch probably would. So that's the main reason why I started to get away from a one watch collection thinking if I did damage the rubber gaskets being out in, you know, 120 degrees out in Death Valley, you know, 20, 30 times a year, after time, that would break down the rubber. And if I did take this diving, if I took it down 10, 15 meters, I'm not sure how pristine those gasket and those seals would be. So that's the main reason why the one watch collection flew out the window and now I'm going with three. Another reason why I love the Explorer is it's a great looking watch, but it's also a silly watch. I mean, this white face with gold painted black, I mean, it, it's kind of silly. It's one of those things that definitely puts a smile on my face because for how serious, rough and tough, it is silly and a little goofy. And that's what just really, I think, makes this watch so unique. It has this high elevation, I mean, literally high elevation as in the Explorer 1 went to the top of Everest. But just a high elevation of being such a refined Rolex luxury timepiece. They use the white gold for its anti-anti, yeah, that's it, anti-corrosion. I think it's so funny they don't show it off. They paint it black after. And I think, that, I think that's so great. That really takes the jewelry side, the jewelry piece away, I think, from the Explorer 2 and makes it so, such a unique watch. And I truly believe the last true tool watch Rolex is making. I mean, the Submariner, which we'll talk about here in a second, is a great, amazing, amazing tool watch. But I think too, it's kind of slid a little bit towards jewelry. There's nothing wrong with that, nothing at all. But the Rolex Explorer 2, there's nothing jewelry about this piece. This is a true, tough, tough tool watch. And if you wanna, the only real luxury part of this watch is the name Rolex on it. God, it's such a, I just, I love this watch. It's such a gorgeous watch. And again, I'll have it forever and ever. I can talk hours about this watch and I have in my past videos as a lot of you know. It's such a, such a great, great tool watch. On to the newest watch in my collection, the Rolex Submariner Date with the black bezel. Now I know everyone thinks this is such a boring watch. Everyone talks about it, but it is boring. Yep, not on my wrist. This is such a great watch. And in just the short time, I only had it for about a, probably a little over a month. In the short time I've had it, I have fallen in love with this watch. It, cause I, I can be brutally honest with you. When I first got this watch, I was a little disappointed. I've tried it on, or I tried it on many times before I actually purchased it. But when I got it, I just, it might've been the hype around the watch. It wasn't, I don't know exactly what it was, but putting it on and wearing it out of the AD, I was a little just kind of disappointed. And you know how you get that big high when you're trying to get a watch, trying to get a watch. I was fortunate, I only had to wait about a month for this watch, but I was disappointed. Then I actually started wearing it around town took it out on an adventure up to the mountains and wore it for a week and it has become just a staple. I really, really enjoy this watch now and all those first thoughts I had when I first got it, 
out the window. I truly love this watch. It's perfect for any situation. Like I said earlier, I got it. It's got a hundred meter, or excuse me, 300 meters of water resistance. I'm never gonna go that deep, but I feel so safe and comfortable when I went scuba diving with it, when I go swimming in mountain lakes. This is just gonna take a little bit of brunt off my Rolex Explorer 2. I think it's the perfect watch for that because like the Rolex Explorer 2, it can go anywhere and do anything and it's a little bit more, how do I say it? It is a little bit more of a jewelry piece. It's definitely a lot prettier and better looking than the Rolex Explorer 2 in a jewelry kind of elegant way. I mean, I love the way the Explorer looks just because, excuse me, the Explorer 2, just because it's such a tool, tool looking watch. The Submariner is too as well and I've noticed that but it's just, it's got a handsomer, it's definitely more iconic. A lot of you would say boring. A lot of people would say boring, but boring is dependable. Boring is that person you can call in any situation for help or whatever you need. They're there, they're right there for you. And that's exactly what the Rolex Mariner is, at least to me in the short time I've had it. I love the rotating bezel. The bezel itself is a little shiny, but that just adds to the kind of the look of it. I use the rotating bezel pretty much every time I have this watch on, either to time my, my walks, my hikes, or even just setting reminders for myself to use this bezel. I'm using the hour hand too. It's not 100% precise, but just kind of using it in that way so I can time longer than an hour. You saw in my last video, I switched it to a strap. I always switch uh, the metal out when I do long hikes. But this band is very, very comfortable. I wear it more with the band actually, because this is gonna be kind of, this. I'm gonna use this as more of my formal event watch, as well as my water watch. So whenever I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff in the water, um, you know, because we're coming up, we're gonna be doing Zion, if you know the subway, up in Zion, you have to, the trail is pretty much you're swimming through a river. So I'll be wearing this for that adventure as well as I think we got a wedding or two coming up. I'll be wearing this watch for that. Cause it's just, it's gonna be my, it's not gonna take the place of my Rolex Explorer 2 as a daily wearer. It's gonna be more of kind of my specialty piece. It is gonna get beat up. I don't have a problem with dinging these watches up. I, no matter what watch it is, I think they do look better beat up, dinged up, G-Shock, the Explorer, the Submariner, all I think look good with scratches and dents. And this will be no different. Great legibility, not quite as good as the Explorer 2, but I can, you know, quick glance in almost any lighting situation, I can get the time really quick. The date complication on this watch, I'm really glad I did go with it. Just with the traveling I do, I need to know the date and I very, I. I'm one of those people I don't like having my cell phone on me all the time as I'll turn it off a lot and just leave it at home most of the time. So I do need a date. I'm really glad I did go with the date option. It does, it, I mean, proportions, I'm not too much, I'm not too worried about the looks of these watches. I think they all look great. It does throw it off a little bit with that white date window and the big crown, the triple lock crown on the right. It does put a lot of weight on the right-hand side of this watch. It doesn't bother me. It gives me more of a tool feel, tool look anyway. I still plan on using the Rolex Explorer 2 a lot more out in the field and everything like that. And the Submariner is just as capable, tough, robust as the Explorer 2. And I'm really looking forward to get a lot more wrist time with this watch. Cause yeah, it's, it's all, <laughs> it really comes back to the smile on my face. And they all just put a smile on my face, just knowing what went into these watches, the history. I mean, the Submariner, just, it's probably the most iconic watch of all time. And I didn't get it for that. I just got it for just an all around watch, you know, kind of the ultimate one watch collection. You can say that for the Submariner or the Explorer too. They just have everything. And it's gonna be nice mixing them up, you know, wearing them, you know, switching them out and getting a lot of use out of both of them while also to limiting the wear and tear by spreading out the wrist time between the two of them. Now, given the G-Shock is the most accurate watch of these three watches, because it automatically connects and updates the time. But I do have to say, both Rolexes are extremely, extremely accurate over the time I've had them. The Explorer 2 is about a quarter second fast per day, which is incredible. And the Submariner is right there with it. It's just under a second 
fast today. So it's incredible accuracy for mechanical movement. I do wish I could say this three watch collection is it for me, I'm done collecting, but I got, the, I'm not gonna lie, I got the watch collecting bug. There's just so much amazing pieces out there. And I do wanna diverse a little bit more. I do need a dress watch just for those, you know, formal events. So I'll be looking into that. I definitely wanna get an Omega back in my collection. So we'll see how long this three watch collection lasts me, but for now it's, it's a perfect, perfect, set for me. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. We'll be doing, we have the Submariner and Rolex going head to head. I'll see which one I think is the better tool watch. As well as like I talked about, we got some upcoming projects. I'm really excited about some upcoming projects that'll put these watches just in some amazing, amazing location and situations. And that'll be coming up it's a little ways away, but there's going to be some amazing content coming from these projects. Thank you again. Remember, if you are interested in my artwork, we're doing a mega huge sale right now. I've never done before. I will never do it again. I promise you that. Link in the description below. Thank you again. Cheers.